Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're uh, unpacking a global risk assessment for August 14th, 2025. Our sources are painting this picture, it's pretty stark, of a world on alert. We're seeing multiple crises, all interconnected, happening right now. Exactly. It's this combination of extreme weather, you know, amplified by the climate system changes we've seen happening at the same time as uh, significant geophysical stuff, volcanoes, quakes. So our mission today is really to cut through that noise, try to make sense of this compounding risk landscape for you. Okay, let's dive in. The global heat crisis first. Europe seems to be under a uh, historic heat dome. We're talking forecasts of 40, even 44 degrees Celsius. That's what, 104 to 111 Fahrenheit mm. across France, Spain, Portugal. Yeah, really intense. And the wildfires, catastrophic is the word. Uh, 440,000 hectares burned just this year. That's double the average. Double. And infrastructure failing too, right? Roads unsafe, railway tracks actually deforming. Mm hmm and tragically the human cost hmm. over 1884 deaths linked just to the heat waves in Europe this year already it's staggering and it's not just Europe is it the sources point to the US southwest too Arizona Maricopa County specifically seeing a really persistent heat wave over 400 suspected deaths there this summer alone right phoenix is i think on track for its hottest august ever so multiple continents under severe heat stress but you mentioned something interesting before, the attribution science. How does that fit in? Ah, yeah, this is fascinating. There was a recent study, it looked at that July heat wave up in Fenoscandia. It concluded climate change made it two degrees Celsius hotter and, get this, at least 10 times more likely to happen. 10 times. 10 times. So this really shifts things, doesn't it? We move from thinking of these as, you know, unpredictable acts of God to seeing them as, well, quantifiable consequences. Consequences we can measure and to some extent attribute. Oh, yeah. okay, that really drives home the interconnectedness. So from heat, let's shift to uh, water and wind. Hydrometeorological hazards. The Atlantic's active. Yeah. Very active. Tropical storm Aaron is the main focus right now. Forecasts show it rapidly intensifying, likely a major hurricane, category three or stronger, maybe by Sunday. And that's fueled by unusually warm ocean waters, right? Like 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Precisely, extremely warm. But here's the crucial thing for you listening, even if you're nowhere near the direct path. Okay. The indirect impacts, that's the widespread threat here. High confidence on this. We're talking dangerous swells, powerful coastal currents, life-threatening rip currents along the entire U.S. East Coast. The whole coast. Yeah. Regardless of where Aaron actually goes. Yep. From roughly August 21st to the 27th, it's an often underestimated risk, but it affects way more people than just the landfall zone. That indirect impact point is huge. It really mm -hmm. shows the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Aaron. Other things are happening. No, definitely not just Aaron. We're seeing severe convective storms, you know, hail, wind damage across the U.S. plains, plus locally heavy rain, uh, posing flood risks near Philly, for example. And overseas, South Korea's had deadly rains, over a thousand evacuations. Wow. Okay, so heat, storms, and the Earth itself is active too. Geophysical unrest. Exactly. This is quite something. Remember that massive 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake in Kamchatka, Russia, back on July 30th? Yeah, huge. Well, it seems to have triggered what sources are calling a parade of erupting volcanoes, at least seven uh, erupting simultaneously. Haven't seen anything like that in nearly 300 years. Ash plumes hitting 12 kilometers, that's 39,000 feet big risk for aviation seven at once so the aviation alert is red now the red alert yes a direct ongoing threat to global flight routes and it doesn't stop there indonesia's Liwatobi volcano is at alert level four that's forced over 4700 evacuations shut down regional airports okay and then there's tau volcano in the philippines near manila right huge population center over 24 million people nearby it's only at alert level one but there's increased seismic activity risk of sudden eruption so multiple simultaneous hot spots on the ring of fire it's a significant correlated risk heat storms volcanoes earthquakes yeah it feels like a lot but there's one more factor the sources mentioned something about space weather right that's the extraterrestrial angle if you like and it's relevant NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center uh, they're forecasting a 55 percent chance of R1 to R2 radio blackouts for today, August 14th, minor to moderate level. Okay, R1, R2, what does that actually mean on the ground? Well, it can disrupt high frequency radio, HF radio. That's critical for planes flying over oceans, for ships. 
And it can also mess with GPS accuracy. Ah, okay. So even a minor space weather event when everything else is already stressed? Exactly. It becomes what we call a threat multiplier. It can hamper communication, coordination, situational awareness for first responders when they need it most. It just adds another layer of difficulty. Right. That interconnectedness again. Uh. So wrapping this up, what's the big takeaway here for you listening? The sources seem to be emphasizing this idea of an era of compounding crises. These aren't just separate bad events. Not at all. They're deeply linked. The whole picture is, frankly, far more dangerous than just looking at each piece separately. And it prompts a really important question, I think. Which? When events that used to be considered, you know, statistically impossible before climate change, when they're now 10 times more likely because of it, what does that really mean for how we need to fundamentally rethink things? Preparedness, adaptation, even accountability on a global scale. Mm. It forces us to ask, how do we build genuine resilience in this rapidly changing world? It's not just about getting through the next crisis, but strategically preparing for this new reality. A sobering thought to end on. Thinking beyond survival to actual resilience. Thanks for breaking that down. That's